Hey guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel. Now tonight's video is a bit of an impromptu one because Intel have just announced their brand new 8086K processor, which is the new flagship of the i7 8th generation range. So it's just been announced in the last 24 hours and of course, having only just built a new system with an 8700K processor in it, I thought, oh no, because I just bought the processor. Am I going to get one of these chips? What's the difference? What exactly are we looking at here? So I thought I'd jump into the specs, do a lot of reading, figure it all out. And what I've found is pretty interesting. So I thought I'd share it with you guys tonight and be one of the first to sort of explain how all this works to you guys. So basically what this is, it's a 40th anniversary celebration chip. So it's a limited edition from Intel. Now, their specs in terms of their base clocks and maximum turbo frequencies are pretty impressive. This is the first time that Intel has released a chip with a off-the-shelf clock speed of 5 gigahertz, which is pretty impressive. So the base clock is now 4 gigahertz and the maximum turbo frequency is 5 gigahertz. Comparing that to the 8700K processor, that was 3.7 gigahertz base clock with a 4.7 gigahertz maximum turbo. And I'm just looking down at the spec sheets here to make sure I don't say anything wrong. But in saying that, we do need to be very careful with how we use these numbers because the maximum turbo clock frequency is a single core clock frequency. And in the real world, you very, very rarely actually see the processor being utilized in this way. So for me with my 8700K processor, which is supposed to reach 4.7 gigahertz, I never once actually saw that jump over 4.4 gigahertz when using multi-core um, applications and stuff like that. So unless you're using a single core application, you're never going to see that five gigahertz clock speed anyway. So just keep that in mind here. So basically, yeah, like we're, like we're saying basically a 300 megahertz increase in clock speed for about a five to 10% premium in terms of price. So the, my local retailer, pckasegear.com.au, are selling this new processor for about $630, whereas the 8700K, they were selling for $499. So different retailers around the world will be selling it for different prices. And because it is a limited edition chip, the pricing might fluctuate quite a lot depending on availability. I'm not sure exactly how many they're actually releasing of this chip. I did read it somewhere, but I've forgotten. But it wasn't a huge amount. It was somewhere in the vicinity of about 50,000 chips or something like that, I think. So... Not a huge amount. So every other specification in terms of, you know, the caches, the TPD, everything else like that is exactly the same as the 8700K. And the reason for that is that essentially this chip is just an 8700K that has been binned a little bit higher, meaning that it can reach slightly higher clock speeds. So if you're not familiar with binning, basically what Intel do when they create new processes is they'll create one basic, you know, substrate structure. So the actual chip for a bunch of different models is exactly the same physically. And what they do is they test those chips and then ones that reach certain clock speeds will be binned in one sector and then other ones that are reach lower clock speeds will be binned separately. So in the end, you might have say one chip which becomes an 8700K, another chip which becomes an 8700 and so forth, depending on the clock speeds that they reach. So therefore, you know, if you have a chip that has a broken core, for example, you can you can still use it, but you just call it something else and make it, you know, like say a four core chip or something like that. So that's the way Intel saves a lot of money in their production. And this is pretty standard across the board for most um, microprocessor manufacturers. AMD do the same thing. You know, RAM manufacturers do the same thing as well. Basically, any semiconductor manufacturer will do this to save money on production and they pass those savings on to the customer in most cases. So essentially what we're looking at here is an 8700K processor which has been binned a little bit higher. We know that it can reach 300 megahertz higher clock speeds off the shelf at its factory at, at its factory settings. So basically what you're buying is a chip that you know is going to perform a little bit better than 8700K out of the box. Now it's important to note that there are services available like Silicon Lottery which sell binned chips off the shelf and the way they do it is a little bit more impressive because what they do is they test the chips with a um, with a with a multi-core um, clock speed. So basically, if you're buying a five gigahertz chip from them, you know that it can reach a clock speed of five gigahertz locked on all six cores in the case of this chip at all times. So that is definitely, you know, a higher overall performance chip than say an 8086K processor, which is guaranteed to hit a five gigahertz overclock on a single core. So the debate then becomes, is it worth buying an 8086K processor over a binned 8700K processor? So the other really important thing to note here is that both chips are physically identical in terms of their heat spreader and the thermal interface material used as well. So that is to say that 
the IHS isn't soldered onto this chip, just the same as it isn't on the 8700K. So to reach those maximum overclocking settings that you're all wanting, then you are still going to want to delid this chip. And if you watch my previous videos where I delidded my 8700K, you'll see just the massive difference that deleting does actually make. So you're not buying some special edition chip with a super ultra amazing heat spreader on it that's going to overclock and reach way better temperatures or anything like that. You literally are buying exactly the same physical chip, just slightly higher bins. So in terms of real world overclocking, uh, the famous overclocker DeBauer has already actually tested one of these on liquid nitrogen. He was able to reach a maximum overclock uh, locked on all six cores of what was it, uh, 7,240 megahertz. And he was using a massive core voltage of 1.8 volts to reach that clock speed. Now, by comparison, he was able to reach on an 8700K 7.3 gigahertz, but he had to use a couple of different samples to find one that actually was able to reach that clock speed. Now, because he was using a sample chip from Intel to showcase the 8086, we don't know that that wasn't some amazing 90, 90, 99th percentile chip there that he was using. So it's really hard to say from that one result there that you know this chip is going to perform better in the real, real world in terms of overclocking than an 8700K. But theoretically, being a higher bin chip, I would imagine that it should do. But comparing it to a Silicon Lottery 5.3 uh, gigahertz overclocking chip, probably going to be about on par, if not a little bit less performance. So what will be really interesting is once some people start to get their hands on these 8086s and start to push them in more real world scenarios using, you know, things like high end air coolers and water cooling, like what I have in my system. So I'm keen to get my hands on one if I can, but I'm not super keen on spending a whole bunch of extra money just to buy the same chip that may or may not perform better in the real world. But if you are looking at building a new system, then you know, I think you'd probably be crazy not to buy this chip simply because it is the best chip that you can buy for the money within that range at the moment. And there's no real reason not to in the real world. So look, I hope that you guys have found this video interesting and useful. Obviously, as more information comes to light and more people test out these chips, or if I get my hands on one to test myself, I'll definitely be doing some more videos following up on the overclockability and stuff like that. But look, basically to break it down for you, it's exactly the same as an 8700K. So don't expect massive differences. The only physical difference is that, well, sorry, not physical. The only difference is that it's a higher bin chip, which means theoretically it'll overclock a little bit better and it performs a little bit better out of the box. So thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If it's been useful for you, please do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button too, so you don't miss the next video and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mm hmm?